Okay, so how's everybody doing? So what I want to do is just take just a few minutes to show you how I made this windsock here. Um, this is part of the barge slip, one of the towers. Uh, the whole scene isn't completely finished, but you know, it's primarily there. But uh, I need to build another one of these anyway, because there's two windsocks, like where the ferry comes in and the tug eventually on River Road on section one. Um, This is the first windsock on the tower right near the front of the ramp. And then there's another one further down on the landing that I want to make. But I want to show how easy they are to make, really. And you can do flags like this or whatever. And all you need for this one is basically toilet paper and some water and a plug like this. Uh, this is just a square piece of plastic. You could use a piece of wood, too. I just like plastic because I know it won't absorb water so much, but maybe absorbing the water is a good thing because you know how you can take toilet paper and then wet it? Kids do it, you know, <laughs> they throw it against the wall in the public washes, whatever, <laughs> in schools, right? And it doesn't come off, like if it's left on there for two or three days, it doesn't come off very, excuse me, um, it doesn't come off very easily, right? <laughs> it's like, like it's the pulp, I guess it turns back into pulp, right, you know? and then becomes almost like a glue or, you know, a paper mache. Um, anyway, all I do is just take like this plastic, I just uh, carved it down and then I took my lighter and I put a bit of a bend in it, right? Just to kind of simulate, like see here, like the shape, like this is how, how it works, right? So you can see it, it goes right over top, right? Okay. Uh, but it's a little bit longer. I cut the end off and there'll be a tube opening there and then I trim the uh, base off and I put a little wire, just take a piece of wire, make a loop and then I glue it to a piece of plastic rod. But I'll show you quickly how I do it. So I just basically lay on the piece like this. Okay, this is similar to the tarp that I made in the old uh, auto wrecker uh, episode. And I just tamp it down a little bit like that. Okay just with a damp brush. And then I'm just gonna basically turn it gently. Okay, and if there's a few wrinkles in it, good. That's what you want. So I'm just gonna roll this, it's just this one piece, which is like, you know, two inches by four inches or whatever. Like you wanna make it a little bit larger than the actual sock because you will trim this uh, after it's uh, basically, you know, when you slip it off this plug okay so that's all I do is just turn it keep it wet roll it around that might be, be even too much but if you wet it down good it uh, usually forms into one solid tissue and you just want to tamp it uh, because uh, that way you won't tear it Okay, so here's the pole stanchion, and uh, you'll notice also that I, uh, for any kind of uh, light pole or whatever, I like to build the stanchion as a separate model, and it's really just a, some tube, right? And I'll show you, here's the three that you need. Here's for the pole, whether it's a flag pole, windsock pole, whatever. And then this is the, this medium-sized piece, and then here's the large tube ring. So I just cut a, a ring, like a larger ring, and I'll just show you this. So here's the larger, almost all the evergreen is telescoping. Some slide easy, or some will be a little bit loose and some are a little bit tight. So I just cut a ring off there. I had to cut two or three because the first one kind of angles off, but you just roll your knife over it gently and carefully, and you'll get one that's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then of course you just slide it over top of this number 223, 332nd. And then, of course, here's the pole, right? And the pole slides in easy and nice, see? Eh? So what you end up with is your stanchion that it just slides into like that, see? Eh? And it's removable. And if you build these at larger scale, and this is a tube, then you can run wires up for a light as well. Uh, you can even do it in HO, but you need to use a little bit heavier pole than this. You can get aluminum, K&S and so on, have really small aluminum and brass 
poles that you can use, which I'm going to use on the barge ramp, which now, speaking of the ramp, we'll go up there and I'll show you how I mount these and where I'm going to put them because I'm going to install two. So I learned this trick of drilling out a solid rod when I was a kid from, I think it was Francois Verlinden or one of the military modelers. I think it was 15 or years old or something. It goes way back. Uh, when they would uh, take a number 11 blade, because the number 11 blades have been around for, you know, what, 50 plus years or something? Um, or more maybe. So I just take a number 11 blade to start the hole. And uh, if you're new to this, uh, you might want to be careful. You don't poke and stab yourself. Uh, but once you do it a few times, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to do. You just get a little bit of a holster, just so that like a pilot hole for the drill bit. All right, and then I take a small little drill bit. I think this is about an 80 thou. And I uh, just gently start to turn it you can see that you know if the drill bit's sharp and good uh, it'll start to cut in a hole and you can see and if the hole's off center bit you can always correct it a bit with the tip of the number 11. this is how we did all our gun barrels when we were into the diorama monogram revel phase during the shepherd Payne era and little details like uh, this is where super detailing began drill out the gun barrels you know because they were solid pieces of plastic so you can do this with any kind of rod um, you can challenge yourself and do smaller than 364 if you want uh, if you have any ch challenges maybe you can try the next size up 1 16th so this is the flagpole right and uh, what I want to do is is just get enough of a hole so that um, I can basically take that loop that I'm going to make. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then, you know, whatever height the flagpole is, I'll just nip it off. So I got a little pocket now for, to, for some glue, probably CA or matte medium or even solvent might work. And then I'm going to take this here um, from Model Supplies Details Associates. They have brass wire, and these guys deal with the really small wire that's smaller than even the KNS. Like this goes down to 0.5 millimeter. I think that's about it for KNS, and everything else up from there. Okay, which is a must-have. Some of this KNS metal for scratch builders. So I'm going to take a little piece of this, right, and uh, I'm going to take my orbital. A needle nose orbital meaning they're rounded see you can get these at a tool place like lee valley tools has these or kms tools or these are i love these uh, i've had these for 30 years too i think but you can still get them and i just take the take the brass rod like this and i just basically grab it and then twist it around i mean you don't have to have these pliers you can do it um you know uh, with a drill bit or something, you know, okay. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Let's just grab a little dark background for you there so you can just see that. Okay, really easy to do, right? Okay. So when the wind sock is done, which is drying on the rack right now, you can see that I just take that and bend it to the size that you think you need. And then attach the windsock with some CA. And then put a little bit of matte medium around just to secure it. And then you have your basically your little wire mount, you know, that'll support that. And then of course it just you just nip it off and glue it into the top of the pole and paint it. And you got yourself a nice windsock on a pole, right? Okay, so uh, getting down to the nitty-gritty here with the windsock. 
So you can see here it is, and I put a few coats of uh, matte medium. So remember when I, just to recap quick, uh, remember when I made this out of toilet paper, right? And it was still stiff with no glue or nothing because it slides right off the plug, right? And if you take some 50-50 matte medium water, 50 water, 50 matte medium, and gently sort of paint it on, because if you go straight matte medium, I mean, you might be able to do it, but it might, might, you know, uh, deform the shape. But if you do it gently, very thin, just dab it on, let it dry, it stiffens more. And then the next day, uh, take some full 100% uh, matte medium, you know, with a brush, and then just sort of lay it on. Now it's got, now, like, now, I mean, I could crush this if I want to, but it's pretty stiff. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's cool right now um you can see it's hollow right just like a windsock now i'm going to take the scissors here and i'm just going to trim the end off because it has to have a little bit of an exhaust right so i'll just take this nibble that off like that and then just make sure that that hole is uh, evident there okay now, what I'm going to do is, you can see the little brass wire. I bent it, put a little bit of a return leg on it like that, because that's the way the prototype one is here. Like, I'll just show you this quick. You can see it back here. This is the one that's further back on the landing, like where the reef is. Okay. And then you can see on the barge slip, there's one here. And they're quite large, you know. Like, if you look at the length of this, and then the end of the car that's closest to the, it's, this is on the same plane. This is fully loaded, this barge, this day. I mean, you know how large a person is way down here. Look at the size of it. Like they're quite large because the tugboat and everything needs to see them eh, from a distance. Like they need to know the wind and everything when they're approaching the barge slip. And this one here further down is protects for the reef. So there's two, right? Because the shifting winds and everything on the river. So you can see this one here, which is what this one is going to be ultimately, right? It's going to be mounted. Uh, I have a few mount points there near the tree line here. So what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to take some CA. I got a little bit on the side here. And some medium CA. I'm going to just put a blob on the end of this because I drilled this out, right? Remember how I talked about drilling out? Uh, I showed you how to drill out a rod. Something the military modelers are really um, familiar with because uh, well, I don't know if they need to do it now, but I'm sort of missing the mark a bit this morning. Okay, so there. So that's on, right? Doesn't that look cool? So now what I'm going to do with that is, uh, rather than just leave that CA bond, I'm just going to coat it with, um, I've talked about this before, uh, with just a little blob of straight matte medium, just over top of it. And the matte medium will just dry uh, clear and it has a kind of a rubbery kind of finish to it. It'll just ensure that that bond is good because you know they, they take a hit and everything okay so that'll work there and then you can see the stanchion or the pole stanchion uh which is just two pieces of tubing and i like to make them like this way so they s just sort of show a bit in the ground and then uh, you can plant these all over your layout if you want to put poles up and then change positions if you don't like it or whatever you can see there right Okay, and then we'll go up. Well, actually, I'm not going to go up yet. We want to paint it, right? Don't we need to paint this? Okay, so the windsock is sort of based out with flat white to me. I grab it by the wire here because it's the most rigid part. Now, I want to darken the inside just to give it some depth because it wouldn't be white on the inside, really. And we want to create shadow, right? So I could shoot that with the airbrush, get in close, but I don't want to get any dark paint on the outside. And if this is sealed with matte medium, um, then 
it shouldn't seep through famous loss of words right um, it shouldn't seep through too badly <laughs> I just stab a bit in there, in the exhaust pipe there of the windsock. Should be able to cover some of that with orange when I spray that. Don't you just love doing the little details? I mean, after all, it's the little details that really tell the story, right? You know, they've, they've, they're the sentences in the paragraph, you know what I mean? So, uh, it's gonna, Lay in. This is just straight orange. Oh, I should show you that actually. Uh, this is just X6 orange. Like I don't care if it's gloss, because I can just hand paint matte medium over and it'll flatten it. That's right. You can use matte medium, a, a thin coat of matte medium, to as a flat coat. Uh, if you're like on a textured model that you're not worried about a really nice pristine finish. You know what I mean? Um, or you can just spray it with flat coat. But I'm not going to go to the trouble to. Uh, you know, load up my airbrush and use up my coveted Tamiya flat clear. Um, so I just, I don't want to cover it in one whole pass, right? I want to uh, get a little bit on there and let it dry a bit. What would happen if I just shot air through the, through the, through it? That seems to work. So the nice thing about, uh, you know, the pedestal that I built, you know how this will drop in the pedestal and you can turn it, you can turn them all, the flags and the wind socks, if you want to change the wind <laughs> on your layout, right? Anyway, that looks pretty good. We'll just leave that for now and should be just fine. We'll go have a look and see what it looks like on the layout. Okay, so I'm going to just lift this yard office off. And then you can see I just drill a hole here for this flagpole stanchion. I ended up making half a dozen of these because uh, I figured I ah, just you know install a bunch um, all over the layout. You won't regret it because you'll just see oh that's a cool place for a pole you know. Uh, this is another thing that I love about the matte medium is you can just sort of blob it in and it just virtually disappears right. Now remember, you can use Mod Podge for this, but the reason why I use professional matte medium is because it doesn't leave a film. It's 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 the best there is in my experience so far. So, anyway, um, <clears throat> excuse me. A couple things here. You can see there's a hole down here, which you never see um, when you're viewing the layout. The, you can see my track. Like, see all that wiring there. There's wiring in there. That's all my track and turnout. There's a, tur there's a frog on this uh, ramp approach. That's all my wiring with the Dean's plug. So if I pull this ramp up, there's a big stove bolt that holds the center uh, maple spline and tongue and groove right here. So I can just pull this ramp right off and there's a Dean's plug under there and the whole thing unplugs and comes off the layout. And then I got a hole drilled right here. Sorry if it's echoey under here, because as soon as I get inside the shadow box, it's like a sound chamber, which is why the locomotives sound awesome uh, when you're live. I just really love that about the overhead valance kind of encasement. It's sort of like a snare drum, sort of. Anyway, um, that's for the wiring for, you know, when I start to get into building wire, there's a little light that goes in at the back here to light up this little sort of uh, maintenance yard at the back. So that'll go like that, and then when I do the flag, uh, I can pull it out out of the way and get a camera in there, and it'll go in like that. Okay. So 
So I really can't stand the papery look, you know, the paper flag. So I put some matte resin, you know, the Vallejo, right? Just to kind of retain the shape, I put a bit of a wave into the flag to go along with the profile that it's cut out at. And then I find if you just touch a little bit of paint on the edges of it, it kind of changes the tone of the flag, as long as you don't get any over the red or vice versa. Um, I'll just do the edge. And then it just helps to add some flat flatness to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, I'll just do a little bit of this white just to kind of clean it up a bit. And then I'll do the edge, like notice the edge of the flag, how it's, uh, you can see the white paper, kind of. So what I think I'll do, so I love about um, model, model air or model color paint, just a jar of water and quick flip of the brush and the water and your paintbrush is ready to go with another color or touch up, you know. I don't actually do this with Tamiya because Tamiya has a tendency to, when you use a traditional brush, to uh, to cut through to cut through the underlying layer. So I want to just hit the uh, the bottom of the flag there. See how the uh, see how there's kind of a white. white edge really you can really see it on this side and we turn this around a bit yeah this really makes a difference a little it's amazing how something like this will really change the look of something right watch you cover this I think I just missed the edge of it or the end of it right here. Yeah, and you see how it's a little bit darker, the red? That's just, it'll look like a light shift. That's all it'll do, right? That looks much better, eh? Right? Doesn't it? Doesn't that look better than just a paper flag, bit of matte flat on there? And then, uh, Touch up with a little bit of dead flat paint. That look better. Maple leaf looks fine. I love the maple leaf. Oops, sorry. Okay, and then probably what I'll do is uh, here. I'll just take a touch of black and uh, turn this around. And take a little bit of that black and just put a line between there. Just to indicate a kind of a clamp. They've got a couple of Canadian flags kind of like this on a Via Rail decal set that I saw. You have to buy the whole set just to get it. But if I do, I guess it was only six bucks, but if I do, I'm going to use it for the tugboat because I have the Canadian flag on a tugboat. So, and the ferry. Okay, that looks that looks uh, pretty good, eh? The national flag, eh?